Hello, today I'm talking to Dr. Harun Gajraj about the causes of varicose veins. Dr. Gajraj is one of the country's leading vascular surgeons and he runs the Melbury Clinic in Dorset as well as clinics across the southwest of England. Dr. Gajraj, thank you for joining me today. I'd like to start by asking you, what causes varicose veins? Well, the main cause of, uh, or the main risk factors are a family history and your age. So for example, if you've got a strong family history, you're at high risk of developing a vein problem yourself. And it's been estimated that if both your mother and your father have a vein problem, you probably have an 80% chance of developing it yourself. Now, although young people can get vein problems, it's true that the uh, risk of developing a vein problem increases as we get older. So those are the two main risk factors. Uh, we don't really know what causes varicose veins. I think it's probably, um, in some people, an inherent weakness of the valves or the veins, so they have a tendency to stretch and give way. Um, so at the moment, our level of understanding is not complete. We know about the risk factors, but we don't know the underlying cause. It's probably partly genetic and hereditary, and it's also partly uh, environmental or lifestyle. I think those are the two main risk factors. Can you inherit varicose veins? We don't really understand the genetic basis for varicose veins. There's a strong family and genetic basis to it, but we don't fully understand it properly. But um, I don't think you can directly inherit varicose veins in the sense that if your parents have varicose veins, you will inevitably develop them yourself. But there is a strong uh, hereditary disposition. Does standing up all day cause varicose veins? Well, there's a lot of debate about uh, lifestyle uh, factors in varicose veins. There is some evidence that occupations that involve a lot of standing uh, have a higher incidence, that is a higher risk of people developing varicose veins, but I think it's really a risk factor rather than you will definitely get varicose veins if you do a lot of standing. Typically, it's said that hairdressers get a lot of varicose veins, for example, and certainly I see a lot of people uh, who are hairdressers with vein problems, but um, it probably doesn't directly lead to varicose veins unless you already have an underlying weakness of your veins. Does obesity or lack of exercise cause varicose veins? Well, that's something that's asked a lot. Um, is it my weight or is it the fact that I don't exercise? There is no good evidence that either being overweight or uh, not taking much exercise causes varicose veins. The underlying problem is, is probably a weakness of the veins and it's not to do with your weight. I see a lot of people who are very thin, athletic, and they've had terrible varicose veins. And equally, I see a lot of people um, who are overweight who don't have a blemish on their legs. So it's not, uh, it's not clear whether those really contribute to varicose veins at all. What about pregnancy? Does that cause varicose veins? Pregnancy does not cause varicose veins. Um, if it did, we would see many more women than men with varicose veins, and that's just not the case. Certainly a lot of women present with varicose veins, and most of my own practice consists of uh, women with vein problems. But careful studies that have been done show that almost as many men as women have vein problems, and in fact some big studies, one of the biggest being the Edinburgh study, suggests that more men than women have vein problems. So although pregnancy can precipitate the appearance of varicose veins, in someone who perhaps has a weakness of their veins, it doesn't really directly cause varicose veins. Some people say that the contraceptive oral pill or hormone replacement therapy can cause varicose veins. Is there any truth in that? There are hormonal factors in the development of uh, vein problems. Um, for example, the uh, hormone replacement therapy and the oral contraceptive pill have been implicated in some studies with deep vein thrombosis, but there's no convincing evidence that the use of those causes varicose veins. Um, once again, I think if you have a predisposition, it can precipitate the appearance. So, for example, a lot of people um, 
develop thread veins and uh, spider veins when they start hormone replacement therapy or start the pill, but I don't think it actually causes them. Can varicose veins cause blood clots? This is a controversial area. I think up until very recently it was, a, it was said, even by medical experts, that varicose veins do not cause uh, blood clots. Um, but we now have pretty good evidence that varicose veins and the underlying problem in the superficial veins, which is superficial vein reflux, are a risk factor, a strong risk factor, for deep vein thrombosis. And there are a number of reports in the medical literature now looking at large groups of people and following them for a long period to say that those people who don't have varicose veins have a lower risk of deep vein thrombosis than those who do. And furthermore, there's now good evidence that if you treat the varicose veins and the superficial venous reflux, you lower the risk of deep vein thrombosis back to the uh, risk that occurs naturally in the population who don't have varicose veins. So I think you have to be careful about the use of the word cause. Um, I don't think having varicose veins inevitably leads to a deep vein thrombosis, but they are a risk factor which when added to another risk factor can be quite significant. So for example, if, if you were to go into hospital and have a major operation, or if you were to go on a long haul flight, um, having varicose veins raises your risk of a deep vein thrombosis. And can varicose veins cause leg ulcers? Leg ulcers, most leg ulcers are caused by a problem with the vein circulation. Um, it's been estimated that about 80% of all leg ulcers are due to a vein problem. And we've got two sets of veins in our leg, a deep set of veins and a superficial set of veins. And of all the causes of uh, venous leg ulcers, about half are due to problems with the superficial veins. Um, so yes, if you have varicose veins, you are at a higher risk of, um, of, of leg ulcers. Now, again, we have to be careful about the use of the word cause. The underlying problem that leads to varicose veins is superficial vein reflux. That is an abnormal downflow of blood in the superficial veins, which then feeds in and stretches the veins just underneath the skin that we can see. And they show on the surface as lumpy, bumpy veins, varicose veins. But the underlying problem is a downflow of blood in the wrong direction due to uh, unhealthy floppy valves. It's the superficial vein reflux that causes the varicose veins, but it's the superficial vein reflux that also causes the, the leg ulcer. So yes, varicose veins are associated with leg ulcers, but it's the superficial vein reflux that's the underlying problem that causes both. And just finally, Dr. Gashraj, how do you prevent varicose veins? Well, I don't think you can prevent varicose veins. Um, to a certain extent, um, I think it's hereditary and age, and you can't change that. You can't change the colour of your eyes, you can't change your parents, and you can't stop the clock and stop time progressing. So the two biggest risk factors for varicose veins are not within your control. There is very little evidence that anything else makes any big difference, but I think it's a good precaution to keep your weight uh, optimum, um, to adopt a generally healthy lifestyle, uh, and to keep moving and keep exercising. But can you do anything specifically to prevent them? I don't think so, no.